today uh, we'll be working on this um, Hitachi drive that uh, was in the fire. The fire didn't seem to really make much damage, at least externally to it, as much as it did uh, from the liquid, because uh, a lot of these uh, uh, castings are not powder coated and they're exposed bare aluminum and uh, the reaction had started so the corrosion corrosion had set in we're here to find out first of all how bad the damage was uh, i can see that the board is in pretty rough shape and uh, some of the exposed aluminum parts they do look pretty bad so uh, the idea here today is to replace the chassis with um, with a chassis that is good uh, if the head assembly got affected by uh, the moisture then it's also not a really bad thing uh, because that could be replaced. The board itself also is a very important part for a uh, Hitachi hard drive but I'm pretty sure that uh, whatever the information that we would need to extract from the board can be extracted still one way or the other. Probably not going to give this board um, a chance to run the drive just uh, because there's even from the top view I can already see there's quite a bit of corrosion on there and uh, maybe uh, the best thing would be to just avoid it and use a donor board instead uh, after performing quick adaptation. Um, I'll start with taking up, taking apart the uh, uh, circuit board. As you can see the chassis is uh, quite filthy. Just gonna quickly uh, uh, wipe it off. Yeah, it looks like the majority of it uh, is gone. But that is not um, what I'm mainly concerned about. Uh, my main concern it lays around here because that's uh, where that um, gasket that I was talking to you about is located. And uh, if, it, if this part leaked, while this was still uh, surrounded by moisture or uh, being watered down, um, that moisture could get inside. So time to open it up and actually inspect the internal parts of it. And hopefully we're not going to find something that is going to wow us. Little. <laughs> yeah, quite a bit of um, loose debris. That's uh, simply from where the gasket um, had to be cracked open. Like there's like sand and other particles in there. So when the drive is out, I'm actually gonna run it through the lathe and uh, clean it up because uh, I don't wanna let any uh, room for error in this situation. And um, it just preferably has to be as clean uh, well, not preferably, it has to be as clean as possible before it goes into a new chassis.
There it is, ends with uh, 26 AD. Let's power up the drive and wait for it to come ready. There it is. Now we're going to enter the uh, vendor specific utility and wait for the drive to uh, initialize inside of the utility. Now that it's all ready to go, there are always a couple of things um, to um, address when the drive enters the utility and the first thing first if, if the ID came up fully you want to make sure that the drive can read for that I'm gonna go to a tools section and select sector edit on the first sector we get the data and we're gonna skip to the end and on the last sector we also get the data now is the time to make a backup of the resources so save all that just don't need the uh, uh, compose copy let's just gonna go ahead and back out all of that stuff up and once it's ready we can go ahead and switch to a uh, disk uh, sorry we can switch to uh, data extractor and the data extractor mm -hmm. is the uh, imaging uh, utility that is going to help us to create um, an image of the data that the client uh, wants to get back okay so we're going to select our source drive and we're going to navigate now we just got to select our target unit and i am going to image into a um, image file as opposed to a sector by sector clone to a drive um, just because it's a relatively small unit uh, 250 gigs you can keep it on the uh, on the hard drive so uh, first things first, build a head map and make sure that uh, you know which head is uh, being worked with because once that process runs to 100%, every sector that's going to be addressed, it's gonna, the tool is going to know which head it belongs to. It can help us with a bunch of things uh, in terms of monitoring the performance of individual heads, uh, noticing patterns and stuff like that and selecting which heads are active and which ones are not uh, on the flight as the imaging is happening. Uh, here we got two um, two partitions, and the second one. I'm gonna go ahead and um, get the MFT map for it. Uh, that's gonna give us pretty much um, all of the access to all of the records uh, in the file system, so we can select individual parts of the drive that the client is most interested in and target them first, and then if we still need to get the rest. We'll 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 get to that um, after. There's just one more thing I wanted to grab here. This may take a while, so just gonna skip forward to that. Now going back, back once again, and let's just set the drive into uh, work with copy only. and have the MFT scanned. This is a lengthy process, so I'm gonna put it on fast forward for you. Now that it's finally ready, we get to see the structure and now we can actually navigate to uh, specific folders map them out and image what is most critical for the client as opposed to just imaging the whole drive from sector zero to the end or you know this way we know specifically where where individual files are located and that's um, sometimes when the drives are in really rough state is very 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 beneficial because instead of forcing the drive to read the stuff that the client may not care about at all. We're going after 
uh, specific stuff that the customer needs and the sole purpose of sending that drive in um, relies on those files. So I'm just going to go ahead and map out the user profile, get everything out of there, and then once that's um, once that's once that's imaged out, I'm going to go ahead and um, image the rest of the drive. Maybe we will even be able to get a full um, image out of it. And if that's the case, then um, the client most likely will um, be able to even boot off that drive if actually no <laughs> that drive was, that that laptop was in the fire I don't know where I'm going with this got carried away sorry so if you guys experience a similar problem where the drive needs to be um, recovered uh, whether it has been in the fire or whether it has been in a flood whether you just dropped it and stopped working or just stopped working for absolutely no reason just can't access your data uh, the link is in the description and um, we'll be happy to help you out uh, if you have any questions drop a comment below don't forget to hit like subscribe and hit the notification button to get notified the next time video drops i appreciate your time guys thank you very much for your uh, continuous support and I'll see you all in the next episode.